In this video, I want to talk about how to make the shift from downloading other people's models to 3D print to designing your own models to 3D print. We're going to talk about why you should learn 3D design, what CAD software you should invest your time in learning, and how to stay motivated when you hit those challenges. Let's get started. So why learn 3D design when there are so many designs on the internet you can download for free and just print? Two main reasons. One, there won't always be a design for your specific need or to solve your problem. And being able to design your own designs give you that superpower to create anything. And the second reason is it really helps expand your creativity and it just feels so great when you 3D print your own design. What 3D design software should you invest your time in learning? That is a really tough question nowadays with so many great options on the internet and everyone has their opinion on what the best software is. However, what the best software for you to learn is dependent on your experience level and what types of projects you want to focus on when you're doing 3D design. I want to talk about five pieces of software that I have experience in using and give you a brief overview about them to help you make the decision on which software you want to invest your time in learning. I want to start by talking about the entry level software I would recommend, and that is Tinkercad. Tinkercad is a great piece of software if you have zero background in 3D design and also want to get started designing models really quickly. It was designed and used a lot with school aged children, and it's great for that age. In fact, I used it all the time when I taught in a school. However, I would recommend it for ages 7 through 100. And why is it so great? It's based on one simple concept that you can build and create anything from a basic set of building blocks by combining and subtracting shapes. And with just that basic concept, you can create incredible things like this. Even expert designers sometimes use Tinkercad to customize other people's files that they download from the internet. Well, Tinkercad is great for beginners and you can make complicated designs in it, it's not at the level of engineering grade CAD software. So if you have more experience with 3D design or more of a technical background or just want to invest more time in learning a more advanced CAD software, I would suggest one of these two programs, Onshape and Fusion 360. Onshape is a fully browser-based CAD software with all the main features. I like to think of it as Google Docs for CAD. In other words, there's great real-time collaboration and really good version control, and it works on any browser on any device. What makes it really powerful is the parametric design paradigm. For example, to design a box, I start with a 2D sketch and then use features to pop it up into 3D and create this full box. And I do this in a part studio. The real power of a program like Onshape with 3D printing design is the ability to go back to that original sketch, change the dimensions of the box from 4 inches to 3 inches, and with a click of the green check, the whole design just updates. So great for the iterative process with 3D printing. With assemblies, you can model more complex designs and how different parts will interact with each other and actually work, like this scissors lift. Fusion 360 works basically on the same concepts as Onshape. You start with 2D sketches, you dimension them, you pop them into 3D, and you can add other sketches onto those parts dimension them, and then subtract them, or add other features like fillets. There's a lot more here than just that. And what is the main difference? It's the user interface, especially around assemblies. Onshape has part studios and assemblies. Part studios are where you use sketches and features to design your parts. And you can design multiple parts inside a part studio. Then you use assemblies and assembly studios to put them together and show their relations with mates. Fusion 360 has something called components and joints. And it's all stored in one document like this with the complete history on the bottom. And then there's these components in the browser here. 
So for example, this is the car and it has different components inside there that are all connected through joints. And that relationship is shown through joints. That's why if I spin the wheel, it rotates. Onshape and Fusion 360 are both great programs for intermediate to advanced CAD. And you really can't go wrong. But I do want to point out a couple of other things about them. One is cost. Onshape and Fusion 360 both are subscription-based models with a free tier. Fusion 360's basic subscription cost is less expensive than Onshape's for now, as of the recording of this. Fusion 360's free tier works by allowing only a certain number of editable documents open at a time. Of course, you can make a document non-editable and create a new document. It's a little bit of a pain, and also some of the more advanced features around AI are not available. Onshape has a different model. It also has a free tier, but the way its free tier works is that all your models are automatically public. You can't make them private, which means other users of Onshape can search and find your models and make copies of them and edit them. That is a non-starter for some people, but for some people, they don't mind. I personally prefer Onshape's user interface and user experience, but that might just be because of what I'm used to and what I'm coming from. Fusion 360 has a lot of resources on YouTube because it was really popular with makers. Now with both these, of course, the pricing model can change, the free version can go away, and that's something to be aware of. However, if you learn either one of these software, it gives you a really good fundamental understanding of this type of CAD software, and you can apply it to any other type of CAD software. The next two programs I haven't used as much, but I think they're important to talk about. And the first one is OpenSCAD. This is a code-based 3D design program. So instead of using your mouse and drawing things with your mouse, you type in code and create 3D designs. Some people's minds work this way and they think in code. And this is a great program for them. Also, this type of coding-based structure is really good for designs that have more complicated patterns because you can use things like loops. However, for most beginners and even intermediate, that's not the way they want to go. The last program is Blender. And Blender is a free open source program that is designed for 3D animation. And it really is a do all program. I personally have not used it much. And one of the reasons is the learning curve is quite steep. For most of my designs, which are more functional parts, Fusion 360 and Onshape actually do a lot better job. But if you want to do characters and more organic shapes, Blender is great and you can do anything in it. So those are the CAD software I wanted to talk about and choosing the one that's right for you is not always simple. However, I would suggest if you're a beginner, Tinkercad. If you want to do more engineering grade designs, Fusion 360 or Onshape. But if you really want to get an organic design, and more complicated characters, Blender's a great choice and invest in the learning time. Now, when learning something new, such as 3D design, it's often challenging to stay motivated. I know I have this problem, and what often helps me is choosing a project to keep me focused on learning that new skill. Deciding what project that is is really important because you don't want it so ambitious that you get overwhelmed and give up. And you don't want it so easy that it's boring and you don't learn anything new. So I ask myself three questions. First one is, am I excited about it? And that's the easy one. If you're not excited about it, don't choose that project. The second one is, now that I've decided on my project, do I want to start working on it right now? And the reason I ask myself that question is, if I don't want to start working on it right now, even if I'm excited, that means procrastination might have set in. And that's the first warning sign that I might have chosen something that's a little bit too difficult or intimidating. Third, I ask myself how many hard parts of this project are. So there might be some parts of the project that I feel completely overwhelmed with and parts that I feel comfortable with. And I weigh those against each other. If it's only one or two parts that I'm overwhelmed with, I can tackle that. If the whole thing feels overwhelming, it's probably too difficult for me. Now, with 3D printing and when you're learning 3D design, 
it's really important to actually choose a design or project that's pretty small at first. A smaller design that you're excited about and is still challenging will give you more opportunities to iterate. If your 3D design takes two days to print, there's gonna be a lot of wait time in between that design cycle when you're iterating and that can make you lose motivation. However, if it's a 30 minute hour print, all you have to do is wait an hour, test to see if your design works and iterate again. So remember, choose a project that you're excited about, but not too overwhelming and not too easy. Much easier said than done. But I hope you start your journey on 3D design. You can do it. Most people think it's a lot harder than it really is. So jump in, start 3D designing and 3D printing your own designs. Until next time, take the time to learn and create every day. Mm.